got this week's update for you. Um, a bit symbolic, we're not uh, not cooped up in the office. Somewhere between, um, well, somewhere between Manchester, Liverpool and uh, our northwest office and Leeds Bradford. Um, yeah, nice not uh, not being cooped up in the office. I'll get in here otherwise it's a bit windy and you probably won't hear me. Um, not cooped up in the office, out and about. And, uh, and and doing business again, so uh, great, great news. Uh, I've got the uh, the KPI, KPI report in front of me, um, so uh, I'll, I'll run through the report exactly as normal. Um, everything this week has has felt um, yeah remarkably um, close to how we'd like to do business. Uh, I think that the weirdest thing about today is we haven't been able to stop for a pub lunch. It's been uh, um, you know sandwiches from the uh, from the service station but hey you know uh, we get we're getting on so um i'm going to keep doing these updates every week as as i promised um i think it's important to keep abreast of what's happening in the market there's some changes that i want to tell you about there's nothing dramatic this week uh, but there's definitely some things and some sign of some things to, that, that might come in the future uh, and i want to keep you know letting you know what happened um We've also restarted, I've started, and other guys in the office and other, other people have started as well, um, producing the kind of weekly videos that uh, we always used to do as well. So sort of midweek ones on you know, how to um, sort of how to do this, how to do that, what opinions on, on um, you know, just generally property investing, not necessarily the marketplace, um, you know, case studies, things that people can learn and pick up how to do this themselves or um, get a better understanding of what we do and how we do it and why we do it so they're going to start coming back out as well um yeah with the letting business for landlords who who want to grow um i think the combination of those live you know these updates the live in the field updates of you know this is what's happening in the market this week and also the in-depth you know, this is how you grow a property empire um it's useful for landlords who want to grow and, and i guess i'm speaking to landlords who want to grow um so let me yeah, before i start today's update um it's a, it's a relatively short one today actually there's some good news in it and um you know a few bit of sort of question marks um if, let, let me make an offer an open offer um, if you've got a question um something that is holding you back from growing um whatever it might be uh write in and uh, yes yeah, send an email um and ask the question pose the question we'll do our very best i will do my best i'll ask around whatever whatever it takes to get the um uh, the question answered i'll do my best to answer it and hopefully i'll kick start a few people to um to be able to grow their empire themselves um these videos are working you know we in earnest we started doing them as a the lockdown hit 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 as a lockdown hit we started doing the videos in earnest trying to get one out every single week um you know, to keep our landlords up, updated and, and naturally I'm, you know, I'm quite an optimistic person and uh, we're always looking to grow and that was the bend that they took um, since the start of the lockdown we've engaged at well over 100 i think it's probably more like 120 landlords who have di directly responded up the, the, there's there's hundreds we've got into thousands who've watched it but people who have directly responded o over 100 um landlords who want to grow their portfolio uh there are a dozen of those people. Doesn't sound a huge amount of money, uh, um, um, people, um, but uh, a dozen uh, people, landlords, have been in touch and um, started to build their property empire as a result of the videos. Which you know, I think for me that, that, that's fantastic. Um, some of them are using our handhold service. Some of them aren't, and I'm equally fine with both of those. Uh, and. Yeah, the, 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 there's a number who um, um, are, are, will use our handhold. There's other services. There's also a few in there that uh, I think will, will uh, uh, over the coming um, weeks and weeks and months, um, they'll buy houses as well. So, brilliant, really good news. Um, yeah, a while back, I'd have said something like, and I might have even, I might be speaking to somebody here that I've said these exact words to. You know, owning one or two houses, um, it, it won't change your life, but it's better than better than nothing. Um, sort of aim for five, um, maybe ten, and um, yeah, that, that's just wrong now. I don't believe that anymore. Um, I think owning one or two houses is just not worth it um, when it comes to all the tax changes, the regulatory changes. Um, I think mainly, uh, not mainly, it, it's a mental thing as well. If doing this is worth doing, it's worth doing properly. And the people who are sort of tickling around the edges of it at one or two properties, you need to make a decision. Um, 
Are you in this for the long haul? Are you in it for the right reasons? Can you make it profitable? Are you prepared to get over that hump? I've described the hump of sort of the uh, getting to the five, six, seven, eight properties mark. So um, I want more landlords to scale up and um, I think I think they need to, to make the best of the opportunity and also to make it worthwhile. So, you know, um, one or two isn't worth it. Um, you want five, 10, 15, 20, the more the better. And if you think that uh, adding properties is making it harder and harder, you're doing it wrong somehow and that's something that we need to change together i need to help you out with with that as well because you know, every property should make your life easier i certainly find my life a lot easier now um with more properties than i had 10 years ago for example um you know you could say it, it should be harder work with more properties it's not it's easier i've got more people to help so um Update. I'm going to keep banging that drum. I'm going to keep banging, uh, unapologetically as well. So hopefully I will inspire some more landlords to grow. Update. Uh, finding houses to invest. We're out there now doing viewings. It was slow to get them booked in. Um, we are now doing viewings. We did. Um, do you know what? I don't know exactly how many viewings we did this week. It's not quite clear from the, from the, from the numbers, but I know we've secured five properties this week. Um, I'll say it's not um, clear. A lot of these properties were booked in pre and then done afterwards. It's the, 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 the it's a bit, agents are open, but it's a bit sluggish. You might notice that agents doors are closed, but they say open on the door. So I think what we're finding quite often is relationships are the key, definitely as always, but we'll make a phone call to the main office number and no one's there, but we've got a mobile phone number of somebody. There's been quite a few where you know, the manager's away perhaps, but the negotiator's in and they've just given us the keys and we've let ourselves in. Now I know in that situation, nobody else would have seen that house. Um, there's been quite a few where they've said, well, you know, we, we, all, not, not, we can't be bothered to do viewings, but um, we're not doing, if we get an offer that's acceptable, it goes through, we're not gonna keep, keep doing viewings. That's in the name of social distancing. Of course, I, you know, they're probably doing a disservice to their vendors at that point, um, unless it's their vendors that have sort of signed up to that. We, we wouldn't know, um, but we are definitely securing. And, and I guess this is the key takeaway. Um, there are some bargains out there. Uh, I bought two myself this week and like I say, five for clients and all of them were, they were pretty sporty deals. So um, there's definitely some bargains out there. Uh, they just need catching. That's, uh, that's what we need to do. That's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. Um, fixing houses so that once we bought a house fixing it up uh, almost all building sites are back up to normal now um, they're running either as normal or close to normal um, which is what we'd hoped it took a couple of weeks to get them really started back again there's still a few supplier issues nothing major you know uh, adding a few days or weeks to a job uh, and after this long wait it's really not not a big deal there was a bit of a backlog uh, it's been cleared um, electrical safety checks are coming in next month for all managed stock as well. So the team are preparing for that. But generally fixing properties is becoming less uh, problematic. Tenants are you know, no problem getting into a property now. Um, in fact, we haven't got a single tenant that we've needed to get into a property that said you can't come in because I'm self-isolating. It hasn't happened this week. So um, you know, that's probably a sign of things returning to, to normal. We, we certainly weren't impeded at all this week. Renting. So renting out properties. Um, as last week, last week was incredibly busy. It's the similar story, a similar story this week. We're busier than this time last year. Simple as that. Um, a slightly higher fall through, fall through rate than normal. So the difference between somebody say, yes, I'll take that. And them actually getting through and, and, and taking that. And some of them are pulling out themselves and some of them are failing referencing. Um, slightly higher than normal. Um, it was noticeable. Uh, referencing is also taking quite a lot longer and uh, we think that's because the referencing companies and are, are still got people out on furlough so they're short staffed and also employers as well so getting back for the employment references uh, we've switched to open banking which is an easy way to uh, reference to get around that wherever possible it's not always possible uh, the landlord rent and legal cover um, is something we're looking to reintroduce hopefully this month. Fingers crossed on that. That's a, that's a big deal if we can get that in. It was uh, something that uh, was going really well and it was really useful and well received by our landlords uh, just before lockdown and because of the COVID thing, it, it, uninsurable. So uh, the COVID is uninsurable um, and the insurance companies um, furloughed their staff. So 
Uh, that's coming back, hopefully. Uh, there's great demand for single lets and HMOs alike. I had a few comments last week pass through to me from landlords whose HMO rooms aren't renting, uh, like hotcakes, as I described it, because I said HMO rooms, uh, I actually said well-presented HMO rooms um, renting like hotcakes. There's a clear difference between an HMO room that's um, done to a sort of a modern spec, well-decorated, well-furnished, high specification, um, modern sort of tasteful decor, artwork on the walls, those kind of things. Um, take a look at our website. So uh, all of our rental stock is on fortherenters.com, not fortherlandlords.com, fortherenters.com. And you'll see there's a clear difference between um, something that's presented well and something that's presented, I wouldn't even say badly, but just in an old-fashioned, you know, magnolia walls, brown carpet, um, an older style kitchen and maybe not so quite nice furniture. Um, subtle differences in terms of money to get the thing from one to the other. It's not a massive difference when you're building the property, um, but obviously changing it now, you're throwing good stuff away. Um, five, five, six, seven years ago, renting out that older style HMO would have been no problem whatsoever. Things have changed. So um, a few weeks ago, I did point out that we've introduced a fixed price end of tenancy room revamped to bring the older spec HMOs closer to the newer spec and it does work it, it is helping those rooms rent out there's a lot more competition in the HMO market however a good HMO room you know, this, this was another comment you know, does it do HMO still work yes I did absolutely you know there's absolutely no problem at all renting out an HMO room um demand wise it's the same as, as, as single lets we're busy doing that something that was a little bit of a maybe a, a, a common misconception people are, are, are talked about it um saying serviced accommodation is a real problem and, and it's, it's, it's dead you know the industry's dead and, and wrapping up hmos in that they're completely different things an hmo it's a home for somebody. You know, it's a room in a house, but somebody lives there and people still, that demand hasn't gone away. And just in fact, it's gone up a little bit. So more people want these rooms. Service accommodation is much more like a hotel and demand for that has gone literally to zero off a cliff along with you know, hotels and holiday lets and those kind of things. So very different, um, um, but often confused between service accommodation and HMOs. HMOs, yeah, we, we bought one last week. Bought one last week and uh, more importantly, we, we, we finished three last week and they've gone on the market and they're, they're starting to rent. A good standard HMO is renting well. Management, really there's nothing to talk about. So the long-term management of properties, um, there's no exception reports on, or, or exceptions on my KPI dashboard. Um, all the figures are not running as normal. It's kind of the way it should be. It's unusual for us to be giving a weekly update on how the management of, of, of a portfolio is going. Um, it, it shouldn't take that much management or time or thinking about, it should just run smoothly. Which after all, if you've done all the groundwork right, we, we bang on about it a lot, if, if, you, if you get the right property in the right area, you put the right tenant in with the right paperwork, uh, you reference them right and um, you look after the, the the tenancy ongoing collect the rent in a particular way and um, do inspections and and, and do uh, to do do maintenance as needed um it it, it it's uh it, it should there shouldn't be anything else to talk about so you know um no exceptions nothing that uh, we need to bring to your attention so uh incidentally june isn't uh, just a new month for us it's a new financial year so we won't be heady, just he happy just treading water. Um, personally, my plan is to go out there and uh, have some fun, build some empires, uh, my own included. Um, so to everybody watching, why don't you do the same, you know, take some action. Um, if there's something holding you back, don't forget, email in with whatever it is, articulate what it is that you think is holding you back, uh, write in and tell me what it is and I will do my very best to find a solution for you and um, we'll get you uh, growing your own empire. Bye for now.